Justin Allgaier will be returning to Junior Motorsports for the 2021 season, and it looks like NASCAR will be taking a look at some of the incidents that took place at the end of the race last night. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to our video. We have a full full show today, a lot of NASCAR news to discuss. Let's go ahead to jump straight into it. We got stuff from last week up to now. Let's get into it. So, the first report is right before the green flag draw for the Truck Series race on Friday night. Friday night. Austin Hill announced that he would be returning to the 16 for Tory Racing Enterprises in 2021. And similar to what he's done this year in the Xfinity Series, he will kind of run a similar schedule what he did in the Xfinity Series in 2021. Austin Hill has done a really good job in the Truck Series since jumping over to Tory Racing. He's been really close to winning the championship the last couple of years. Granted, he has not been able to make it to the Final Four the last couple of years. But man, Austin Hill, I felt so bad for him not making the Final Four this year because he was replacing for Brad Moffin after Brad Moffin won the championship in 2018. He took over in 2019, and I didn't think a lot of people were expecting him to do much, and he really put up a three or four win season that year. And while he only does have two wins this year, he's arguably been the most consistent driver in the NASCAR Truck Series this year. And as like I said, it's a shame he's not going to be racing for a championship because he had engine troubles this past weekend at Martinsville, but... He's deserved to come back here. He's done really, really well in the Truck Series the last couple of years. I think he will win a championship before he does go up to Xfinity. I think once he wins a championship in Trucks for Tory Racing, I really think there's a good opportunity he will go up to Xfinity and drive for Hattori Racing there. They, I know they're partnered up with MBM in the Xfinity Series with Hattori, to my knowledge. I think they're partnered up with uh, MBM, to my knowledge. I don't remember if they are or not. But Austin Hill will run part-time for them as well. My expectations for Austin Hill next year. He's a championship contender. I think he wins at least three or four races next year. I think he'll also be really consistent. I think top five in the points is going to be where he ends up finishing at least in 2021. On to the next story. We got some Xfinity Series news as well. Josh Williams, this was announced for the green flag drop as well for the Xfinity race on Saturday. Josh Williams will be returning to DGM Racing in 2021. Josh Williams has had a really, really good year for a driver who's kind of an underdog in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. He has scored up to this point six top tens, which is a high for that team. It doesn't surprise me he's returning to them. He's given that team's best ever season ever. He's done really well. He's like top 15 in points, to my knowledge, in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. I think he's going to once again do really well. Expectations are, I think they're going to try to make the playoffs next year. I don't think they are because they're still, even though Xfinity Field is definitely weaker next year think next year that they're still not going to be able to make the plus but I think top 15 in the points term is definitely possible maybe some more top 10s as well more consistency up in the front I know there's been a lot of wrecks to kind of help him as well but Josh Williams even in races where a lot of drivers haven't crashed out he's still been finishing top 15 in top 20 a lot of races and I think the DGM made a really good decision helping him return to that organization in 2021 on to the next story it was announced earlier today that Jack Wood will drive the 21 for GMS Racing in the Arca East and Arca Showdown full-time in 2021. Now, I've never really heard of Jack Wood in the past, but I looked up his stats, and I know that the Arca uh, East field, in my knowledge, is not as strong. Arca West fields are not as strong as well. But I looked up at his stats, he does have a top five for kind of an underfunded car, and I believe this year he has five top tens, in my knowledge, in the Arca East. Yes, I know that that series is a lot weaker than like the Truck Series and Xfinity Series and the Cup Series and even the regular Arca Series, but still, that is still pretty decent stats. If you're up front contending for that, you're and especially not a good car, I think you're doing a really good job. I think Jack Wood will do well with the team. My expectations for him next year. I think his goal is to just get experience with the team and get good next year. There is a chance he could win the championship because Sam Mayer has come over that organization um, in the last couple of years. And as really strong, we know that he's going up to Junior Motorsports next year. Uh, the second half of the year, he'll be going up to Junior Motorsports to drive the eight car. We know that for a fact. That's why Jack Wood's getting this opportunity. I think it's a really good opportunity for Jack Wood. I think he will do decent. I Again, I've never watched a race with Jack Wood, so I really can't give you my full opinion on this guy. But it is really cool that Jack Wood is going to be driving his car. Cannot wait to see what he'll do next season. On to the next story. As I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, Justin Allgaier is going to be returning to Junior Motorsports for the 2021 season, and Brandt will be the primary on the car for 20 races. The other 13 races are currently unknown at the moment. It does not surprise me. It does not shock me one bit. Wow, Justin Allgaier is returning. That's a shocker. No, it does not shock me one bit at all. Justin Allgaier has done really, really well with Junior Motorsports ever since he's been with this organization. I expected this to happen. If we're gonna, if we're gonna be honest, I kind of expected this to happen where Justin Allgaier 
was going to return to Junior Motorsports uh, next year. You know, he's done really well with Junior Motorsports the last couple of years. He has a really good opportunity this year to have a shot at making the Final Four in the 2021 season. He's done really, really well up to this point. I think he has a really good opportunity this year to also win the championship, as he will be competing for the championship at Phoenix this upcoming weekend. Like I said, I think Justin Allgaier has done really, really well over the last couple of years. And also, you shouldn't be surprised that he's returning. I think he will be a junior motorsports probably till the end of his career because, for those who don't know, uh, Kelly Earnhardt Miller, who is one of the owners of Steel Junior Sister, by the way, is one of the owners of this organization. She runs a lot of the operations. Junior runs the operations, too. She runs a lot of the operations for the organization. Uh, she's a, on the board of directors for Brandt. It should be no surprise that he's returning. I mean... I, th I think if you're shocked, it's crazy. But honestly, I think Justin Auger is, like I said, going to do a lot next year. I think he, once again, will be a playoff contender. I think he'll win sooner than he did. He has scored three victories this year, especially in the second half of the year. He has really come to life. And he, like I said, he's really good at Phoenix. He does have an opportunity to win the championship next year. At least he's got that off his chest where he really doesn't have to worry about it. I don't think he had to really worry about returning junior motorsports next year. But, yeah. I'm really excited to see what Justin Oligar can do next year. He deserves to be back in that ride. I'm not expecting him to go ever up the cup. I really don't think he'll be up in cup ever once again. There was a possibility he could go to the 48 car and take over for Jimmy Johnson earlier this year. But it's good that he's returning. You know, he's done really, really well in the Xfinity Series, especially since joining Junior Motorsports. And I cannot wait what he, to see what he will be able to do in the 2021 season. On to the next story. It was announced earlier today that Denny Hamill has a new endorsement deal with Domino's that is rolling out today and is based off based around pizza chains as cars at delivery. The deal, which is just around Hamlin and not any team paint schemes, was negotiated by Pro Sports Management's Kyle Hall. Now, there is possibility eventually that Denny Hamill maybe could use as a main sponsor, but really cool that Domino's is coming back into sport in some shape or form. The last time that Domino's was in NASCAR, to my knowledge, I think was back in 2007, when uh, David Rudiman uh, had that sponsor when Michael Walter Racing was starting up in 2007, he had Domino's on the car in 2007. So it's really cool, and it's just a personal deal at the moment. Now, like I said, this could have actually end up becoming a thing where we might see this as an official sponsor, like maybe for Bubble Walls next year in the 23. But again, we'll have to see what happens as the season goes on. But yeah, really, really awesome, you know, to see that they are getting a new sponsor, you know, coming into NASCAR in a sense. I know it's just a personal deal. It's not a sponsorship or anything, but it's really cool that we're seeing a sponsor like Domino's, which is a big, big corporation, sponsoring a guy like Denny Hamlin. He's worked with them in the past, and I cannot wait to see what they're going to do with Denny Hamlin later this season. On to the next story. It was also announced earlier this morning that Dale Earnhardt Jr. has been named the executive director of iRacing. Now, Dale Jr. has worked with Steve Myers, the owner of iRacing, basically since the beginning. He was one of the first endorsers and lovers of iRacing and Sim Racing. It is not very shocking to me that Dale Jr. has become the executive uh, director. I think he really is going to help iRacing. He's a racer in the past. It's really, really cool as well. This actually will help iRacing grow a lot more. I am expecting Dale Jr. to be on some of those broadcasts as well a lot more with Evan P Pascaca, which he's done a really good job. Pascaca or Pascaca, Picasso, whatever his uh, name is. I can't remember exactly what his name is, but Evan has done a really good job commenting as well, but there is a good possibility you may see Dale Jr. in a lot more of the iRacing broadcast. Dale Jr. has been an avid person for iRacing. He's worked with iRacing. He's gone out and helped kind of help clean up North Wilkesboro. He went out and helped kind of clean up National Fairgrounds as well. Now he's kind of helping work that track, getting that back up for NASCAR dates as well. But yeah, really, really awesome to see that Dale Jr. has become the executive director of for an organization like this. They're a pretty big organization. iRacing, like I said, is the top sim racing uh, thing, if you want to get your best sim race, you go to iRacing to kind of learn. I think it's really awesome that Dale Jr. is going to be going to iRacing to become the executive director. And now we get into the big story and the final story of this episode. NASCAR earlier today said that they, Scott Miller said that they are looking into the incidents that took place coming to the end of the Martinsville race. Now, for those who don't know, Martinsville for the first time became a cutoff race for the round that's going into the championship four for the round of eight, it was the cutoff race. And there were a couple major incidents that they said. Now, NASCAR said they will be reviewing the actions that took place. The first one is Kevin Harvick spinning the 18. Kevin Harvick admitted that he got into the 18. 
because he knew that if he doesn't get at the 18, and they basically needed one point to get in, Kevin Harvick, for those who don't know, just had a really, really bad car throughout the race, and they finally got it kind of back to normal, but they weren't as good at Keselowski, so they would have to move Kyle Busch out of the way. And Kyle Busch gave Kevin Harvick a lot of room to pass on the bottom, but he came up into Kyle Busch and took him out. I wouldn't be surprised if there maybe be a penalty for that, but I really don't know if they're going to penalize Kevin Harvick for that. But the big question is, and the big story is about Eric Jones. Now, for those who don't know, Eric Jones is a teammate of Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin, at the end of the race, was fading. He was really, really falling back. He was in the top five, to my knowledge, and he just kept falling back. Well, Denny Hamlin falls back to about 11th, and the guy behind him is, guess who? Eric Jones, who is a teammate. Now, what's really interesting is Eric Jones is leaving jo Joe Gibbs. So you would think that Eric Jones would maybe go by and try to race Denny Hamlin aggressively, but no, he didn't really race him too aggressively um, at Marsville. Probably not to affect Denny Hamlin's cha championship. I think it's team orders, if we're going to be honest, but there was some audio that came up this past day, and that's where the investigations began. This is radio. So the first one is from Chris Gale, who is the crew chief of Eric Jones. He said, Hamlin is going to race you hard because he needs to because he would then like three points on those guys, just so you're aware. And then about 80 seconds later, about four or five laps later into the race, uh, Rick Corelli's spotter said, don't pass him. Stay with him and drive what you can. I really think Eric Jones could have passed him. I think he easily could have passed him, but it was team orders. Now, in my honest opinion, do, do I think that there are going to be any penalties handed out for the incidents that took place? I really don't know. It's going to be NASCAR's decision. I don't expect. Now, here's why I don't expect to get a penalty. Denny Hamlin, if they penalize Denny Hamlin, that is ultimately going to be ridiculous. I think Denny Hamlin is safe. I don't expect him to be getting any penalties in any shape or form. Eric Jones could get a penalty, but again, I think it was team orders not to pass him. Like I said, I think Denny Hamlin's car was not as good as any of the other guys behind him. He was really, really dropping night. Similar to what happened at Marzell in the in the early summer or late spring. We all saw that Denny Hamlin the night was really, really struggling. And the same problem kind of came for Denny Hamlin. That being said, I really don't see any penalties being handed out to uh, any of the drivers. I don't think they're going to really be any penalties. I'd be extremely shocked. I know this is like kind of a big investigation because people think that this is going to give Denny Hamlin a spot. To be honest with you, Denny Hamlin does not deserve to be penalized for this. If he does get penalized, like I said, I think he's going to be screwed. But there is a chance that Eric Jones could end up getting penalized. Again, I'm not sure if they are going to penalize him. We'll have to see what happens. But... That's one thing we're going to have to wait. I know penalties are supposed to be coming out either tomorrow. That's the one thing we're going to have to watch is, are they going to penalize Denny Hamlin or Eric Jones? Or are they going to penalize anybody? We'll have to find out here very, very shortly. Anyway, uh, by the way, I just want to say the plot system is crap. And Kevin Hart, Denny Hamlin, those guys should have been in the system in a position anyways to have that problem. Anyway, that is going to be it for today's video. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe to the channel. Turn notifications on so you can be notified when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Link description below for that. And comment your thoughts on today's video. Do you believe that there should be any penalties handed out for Martinsville? And if so, let me know in the comments below. And how do you feel about Justin Allgaier and all the people that are returning to organizations, returning to their organizations for silly season? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you do like this so YouTube can recommend these videos out to you guys. If you do that, I really appreciate it. Also, support any NASCAR YouTuber out there. Go support their channels. If you do that, I really appreciate it. Anyway, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's video. And I will see you guys next time. Take care, everybody.